<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of Spitfire, a brand new podcast. Where we talk all things Call of Duty each week. Uh, it should be me and Tun usually on. We'll get as many pros in as possible, as well as some other members of the community that I quite fancy talking to but weren't here tonight. Of course, joining us first of all, uh, a very good and long-time friend of mine. You may see him there in his rather fetching hat. It is, of course, Reedy. Reedy, how are you? No, I'm, I'm good, man. Like yourself? I'm good. I'm good. There is so much to talk about. I'm sure you're slightly busy because we've had a few issues with pros being busy tonight now. All of them. Yeah, I'm sure you're busy as well, but thank no, you for coming my, on. My stock's literally dead and buried, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, there ain't busy at all. More chance I don't, I don't believe that. You know I don't believe that. Yeah, you didn't have a good good year last year, but you still did all right. I still think you're definitely up there. Come on, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 I truly believe that. You got to. Like, I think you got to remember how bad the Epsilon team was before you joined. Hmm. You just that replaced Nathan, that's... mate. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. back now. He's the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan. Wow. Could you imagine? He just <laughs> pops up on Twitter again after a hiatus, man. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm back, guys. All right, let, let's get straight into this one then. Let's get let's get, kind of get straight into it. The biggest change here now for some of these points we're going to talk about. I want to talk. I'm, I'm going to be devil's advocate and I'm going to play the opposite side occasionally um, to keep it as a balanced argument. But let's talk about five v five, right? Ten years of Call of Duty esports. The format has changed. It is quite a significant change with both its pros and cons, but the biggest pro and the reason that they've done it is to bring it close to the public game, the game that people play out of the box. Really, what did you think when you first saw this? I know there's been rumors going on for a month and stuff, and we've just been waiting for it to get it confirmed. I mean, I'm excited for it. Like, when I started playing Call of Duty, I played 5v5 um, back yeah. in Quad 4. Like, I used to play hardcore 5v5 SD only. Um, I think SMD is better for 5v5, personally. Uh, like, we used to, all the hardcore players used to ban the people if you played 4v4s and 3v3s. Yeah. Like, the best teams played 5v5. I've, I've, I'm, like, very knowledgeable when it comes to 5v5 as well. Like, SMD, I don't know how the respawn aspect of it's going to work out. I mean, I feel like we're going to have to introduce a new um, <clears throat> uh, game mode then. I don't feel like hardpoint would work, but that's a story for another day. I'd. I'd just don't know with that, but I'm I'm excited for the change. It's been it's been a bit stale recently, so I just I just feel yeah. like the switch up. It's getting. I mean, this isn't really a good point to look at. All other major esports are five v five tier one, and maybe yeah, you shouldn't follow. But people can call me an idiot for thinking this. I, I just I'm I'm excited for the change. I, I want to see how it all plays pans out and plays out. I think there's so much to it. Like the people have been arguing both ways about 5v5 but there is literally so much to adding one extra player uh, on, on both of us. I know we've talked about, you talked about the respawns there and I think that's a great topic um, the the biggest worry I think about the respawns and it was actually an AW thing because AW was the, the standout engagement game, right? Mm. Uh, players were averaging over 80 engagements a game obviously with an extra player and that would be uh, probably about an average of 100 engagements a game Fortunately, we're back on the ground, so it's not quite as bad. Um, Tun, what do you think about respawns in 5v5? I think it could be potentially a bit chaotic. I think Reedy was definitely right to say that we're not too sure how Hardpoint's going to work. Um, I mean, there's a lot of rumours about... I mean, we've seen that some of the pros have been playing Control. That was one of the things I picked up on in one of the game modes that they played when they first got their hands on it. Uh, Reedy, did you yeah. get your hands on Control? No, I, I, I didn't play the beta. I played two maps at Champs after I got knocked out on the Wednesday. I played two maps at Champs. I didn't play it before Champs because I just wanted to focus on Champs and try to put a good performance in that Champs, but we went there and we all know what happened. Um, but from seeing... I, I watched a lot of streams. From seeing it, it's, it's different. It's like it's just like Lord Vondi. He, he, he's, the, he's the greatest man alive when it comes to Call of Duty. <laughs> Introduced score streaks on Black Ops 2. We didn't want it. He said we're having it. Probably the best thing that's happened to COD. Well, I'll I'll just, point. He also introduced the Codcaster mode, so I'm going to yeah. say that's better. So I, I, I trust this is probably the only game development developer that I trust. Like that's going to lead us in the right direction. If he thinks five v five is the right right uh, right way to go about it, I'm I'm just going to jump on the, the horse and just ride with him because he knows what he's doing. At the end of the day, man, like I think it's a good 
but he has that black ops has got a fantastic reputation for for bringing in new things um speaking of control actually i think there's a really great one here ctf v5 that was where i was a little bit worried because with that many players on it's gonna it's gonna be a bit more difficult to get that flag out 100 yeah, no. more difficult yeah, I, I don't think we'll be playing CTF if it's 5v5. I mean, like, even on Black Ops 3, Jesus Christ, you remember Strongholds? You just yeah. sit back at the map and just, just chill. You had Swanee, like, sitting behind his little rock, little camping twat. Or Marky B, who famously didn't die in the entire match of CTF. Yeah, it's Not just, sure. yeah, I, I, I don't think we should be should play CTF. I mean, I love the game mode, but with 5v5, like, you're going to have a designated camper in your team. It's just boring, man. It ain't yeah. even be fun to watch. But uh, one thing I want to touch on, sorry, uh, so it was Black Ops 2 that Hardpoint came in to mm -hmm. the game. So I, as you said that, um, you know, David Vonderha has brought in these new game modes. If I remember rightly, I, I think a couple of people were quite um, quite worried about a Hardpoint initially. I think it was one yeah. of those things where everyone was like, oh, well, King of the Hill game mode, will it work? You know, it, oh, well, it, that was great. Yeah, no, it, when we initially started, yeah. But there was a few people who questioned it, and there's a few people, I mean, I've seen it, especially on Reddit, a lot of people saying, control won't work, control won't work. But for me, I, I think it's something to try out. You know, I think we've just got to actually give it a go before we start sort of making any decisions on what, whether or not it'll work. But I absolutely agree with you with CTF, though I don't think it'll be any good. s and I think it'll benefit. Um, oh, SMD is going to be 10 times yeah. better, man. I'm telling you right now. I like. I don't like going back to like COD 4, MW2, Black Ops 1, but it just SMD 5v5 makes sense in my eyes. It's it's so much more structured. Like you don't have these runabouts. I mean, I was, I was speaking to an SMD player on Twitter, and he said it was just like four man or five man hitting people because he played a few tournaments on the Black Ops 4 beta yeah. uh, SMD, and I was like, but if you play structured, if those four men are running at you, you're going to make kills. Right. Well, I think that's that's see that's something people don't realise when they talk about four man hits on mm. S and D and stuff, right? Like, you, if you do that, and then and you don't get the trades correctly, like if that player trades well, even yeah. if you're holding the bomb sites, I'm not sure a disadvantage. We saw that on on maps this time round. Like, mm. if you didn't have the numbers enough to hold some of the bomb sites in WW two, it was actually so difficult to hold them because of the pinch. Mm. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he said the maps have been designed for it, so you would like to think they're set up so that they can be approached from different angles, and it's not just going to be a case of sitting five man inside of a bomb site or rushing five man towards a bomb site that should be able to get caught out. It's it's going to be interesting, but I think um, I think a lot of people are worrying too much off what they've seen on the beta. But as you said, you know, in a structured team, are they going to let people get away with a five man push onto a bomb site where everyone's just rushing? It. As long as S and D has bomb sites that aren't pushed up when you're on defense past the halfway line, I mean, I didn't, like I don't know this because I didn't play the beta, so there might be. But if this behind the halfway line and you can set up across the map and have team shooting involved, the better team's always going to win. The team that positions themselves better is going to win in that scenario in five v five. But like on previous games, it was like oh, just headbutt something. But I, I don't, I don't get it how people are saying it was bad on the beta. Right? It, it makes no sense to me because if you were playing structured, you, sh you, you'll get, you'll punish the other team that isn't. In my eyes, anyway. Yeah. But. Also, I think one of the things like it takes a little while for, for the meta to kind of change and start ticking over when the game comes out, right? Mm. Once you, you might have a power spot in the beta or when the game starts coming out, but once that's known, it becomes harder and harder to use as the game goes on. And the whole meta of S and D changes. With these structures, too, you're not actually playing like the game we play in game for like four months in. Mm. Once players really kind of know, and then it becomes about what strategy are we using for this bomb site? What are we doing next? So yeah, I kind of, I kind of get that. It's a lot of people judge it very, very quickly. Like, I don't, how do you judge it? You don't even properly yet. Like, mm. you, don't, you don't know it off by heart. You can never get it blindfolded. Um, this is a good opportunity to move on actually, because there's one massive positive that I tweeted out about the five v five. Sixteen extra players will be supported by the league structure. Right, we yeah, talked yeah. last year about being outside of the league. It was a big thing. This year, 16 extra players will have that opportunity to be on a team, be salaried, have their chance at the prize pool in the league. I just think it's just the right pros. direction, man. Yeah, no, yeah, 16 I, extra pros. It just opens, like, 5v5 opens up so many different avenues for your COD Pro. Right, yeah. if, you're, if you unfortunately fall out of the Pro League, then you can be on a team as a, uh, a sub. Right? Maybe yeah. you don't want to do that. But then again, it still opens up coaching roles, analytic roles. Like, yeah. It's just going to be bigger and better in my eyes. I can't see it. Like, I don't, can't you wait can to do be a coach. 
Probably will end up being a coach when after this year. Tim Martin needs job. <laughs> that wouldn't be our come on, man. Um, <laughs> I think I drop people. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I actually, Sorry, Marky. the Marky B cast, man, joins Splice, turn to shit, goes to the Halo event, they lose the Halo event. <laughs> I think, uh, MB, one minute. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let, let's kind of uh, move on a little bit then from the the five v five because that was obviously the biggest announcement, right? That was that was that was the biggest thing uh, to come out of it, and there is there is so much to talk about in five v five that I'm sure we're going to be talking about it for for months to come and all the massive changes. The other big change, one of the biggest changes for me, whereas five v five is going to cause a roster mania, no region lock, just goes, hey, I heard you like chaos. Well, here's some more. For me, I don't think it's going to actually... No. I don't think it'll be bridged across as much as some people think. I, and it, it ultimately become, comes down to practice. Unless you're moving your whole team, if, say if you're a European team, say if you're red I or, disagree. I, I know, but they're going to have to move over to America to pick up one American player or something like that. Then it just seems like a, a really big investment and how much you're going to return from it, who can you even pick up. I think the, the problem of practice is still a prevalent one in that one. Did they, did they Practice announce, is the biggest issue. Did they announce how the land league was going to be? I know it's one stage, but did they announce how it was going to be? Uh, it'll be in the blog post, which is long. It is. Uh, I was going to say, if, I, I think I know how it's going to be, but I, I don't want to say because if it's not announced, then I don't really want to say. But yeah, if it is how I think it is, I feel like an American player or an Australian player should be fine. Um, well, it's, it's 12 weeks of play. It looks... So here's the thing, right? There's interdivisional play, which to me screams NFL. I okay, feel like yeah. it's going to be like the NFL structure. That's how they're going to do this. And if you don't know what that is, because it's something that I didn't know how they did it, because I've only recently become uh, interested in North American football uh, and North America in football, American football, not soccer. Should North point American them football. Out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so basically, there's two divisions, same as the CWL. And obviously the divisions all play each other, but it's drawn so you play people from the other division and that goes towards your kind of total for the end. And then the best teams from that get put in. There's wild cards that go in and then they all play and they meet up in the Super Bowl. That's how the Super Bowl works, right? There's two at the playoffs that go towards the end. It's actually really simple when you see it, but you also get those, you can get those harder draws come across. You can have a really good team from the other division play you. Or you could have some other... I don't know how exactly they're going to structure it, and I'm sure somebody who knows the NFL more will be able to put that down, but that screams to me that's how they would do it if they're doing interdivisional play. They're going to have you play all your teams in your division, and then there'll be some you draw across from the other side, and it'll be different for every single team, and you just have to kind of play it out that way and see what your record is. Yeah, that's my mind, anyway. It mm. could be... I mean, I think it's interesting either way. However they do it, it's good that they are doing it because I think, as Clint said, you know, it's always like which side is better, who who really knows. And then you only really found out at the events, whereas now we'll sort of see the, the cross-play between them. will we'll be interesting to see. Um, I'll let you move on if you wanted to. Sorry, Bracey, I was gonna. I was about to take over the host and roll, but you... The, the, see, there's questions coming in already, like Jerd, right? We know mm -hmm. Jerd's te still in Splice. And he's been hitting up North Americans already. Mm -hmm. You say people want to go over, but I know for a fact that players are already sorting visas and stuff. Oh, I must. Judd's Jod, moving to Thailand. I feel like that's bait, really. I, I feel like that's, that, that's bait. That's full on bait, isn't it, really? Look at the chat. Oh, here we go. I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. <laughs> that is terrible evidence. That Great is the evidence. worst uh, evidence I've ever evidence. seen. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about North American uh, and this kind of this combination going on, and it's a great idea because what they said on the broadcast was accurate, right? There are European players who fit nicely into some North American rosters, mm -hmm. and that kind of interdimensional, it, it, it's better, right? You don't want to, you don't want to separated by region it's the, it's the old pro league it's not this division thing I think the biggest difference will be that we'll see some Australian players come over to America some of those Australian players especially in a 5v5 format 16 teams for the league you're going to see some Australian players be picked up the issue being is they'll probably gut the actual Australian scene and you won't have any real good teams from out there 
But then who's going to go over? Shox has already signed back with Mind Freak. It's literally just Denza at this point. All right, well, you know, maybe Mind Freak move over, pick up some North American players. That's maybe what happened. Hmm. They, they actually can't because uh, uh, Shox has got to finish his uni degree in here. I feel like Den stays. I feel like Den stays. I feel I feel like Den stays with um Mind Freak. He's good enough to be on the yeah. He's good enough to be on the top American team, but like uh, maybe it's it's not this year. Maybe it's next year. Yeah, you never know what's happening next year, do you? So that's true. Just just getting out there. I think players will keep that in mind now, though. That option's there. That option wasn't there before. Straight up, I uh, I had moved to America in a heartbeat. Like, if a team offered me, like, without a doubt, I'd... it just helps your career in, in the grand scheme of things. Like, the competition over there is just better. Like, you just look at what Ghost done this year. Yeah, you, like, you, you see, you see, it's better for a solo player like yourself looking for a team. That's, mm-hmm. It's good for you. But when in terms of, like, if there's three or four players from the UK looking for one, getting one American back over to Europe, you know, it, it's it's that logistical problem. When you, you've got just like a, an uneven split, whereas if it's just one coming over here or one going over there, then it's different. But it, it, like, a, you, I don't think we'll see like three Americans, two Europeans on a team. I think it's going to be like one European on an American yeah. team or one American on a European team sort of thing. Well, Rather that makes more like sense, right? Yeah. Because you still have the issue of practice and, and where people are going and yeah. stuff, right? Um, and we already know that one... For- RB5 team has already confirmed they've got a player, and that's Red Reserve. Red Reserve before he said, yep, yeah, go on over, Bats, in the least surprising roster move of all time. Yeah, that was... Yeah, that hold was that L splice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold that. I, I don't... To this day, I don't know if they let someone like Bants go for free. Like, just release him just like that. For free? Makes no, yeah, of course. It, like, they, he said he was a restricted free agent. And then he went full that free agent, right? And then he went full free agent. They've released him. They've had to have released him. Like... I think it was interesting they didn't keep that team together and then and wait for the roster mania to kick in and try and rebuild around that, it. That, that, that team was done, man. That team was fully yeah. done. I think but after like, the results, especially towards the tail end of the year, mm, the whole so year as well was just not good. It's just Red will just laugh into the bank, getting bounced, like fully laugh into the bank. Like Oh, yeah, that's a hell of a Matty pickup. Bounce, yeah. John yeah. and uh, Scraps, like... They won, they won the Scraps. Then you, then you had, yeah, and then you had Reese to it. It's just like... I mean, Reese isn't the best, but just add him to it. Just, just, <laughs> wait, wait, you know he's going to be mad. You know he's going to be annoyed. You already know. You did that on purpose. Yeah, no, right, time to move on. Time to move on. We go for this one. Um, different structure this year. Top 32 Vegas Pro League. So auto qualify if you're top four. The top 32, so the remaining 28, will go and they will play off for a chance to get in that Pro League. Really, you've been through relegation. You've been through getting into a team. Admittedly, you got into a team a slightly different way through a player oh, not showing on. up. Hold on, hold on. IW, I qualified fair. Oh, yeah, uh, fair enough. I was talking about this year. Yeah, but still, I've, I've gone through relegation. I've qualified yeah, yeah. fair. I've retained the spot. Do you think this, this slightly different way to come through? My initial thought is it's much better than and, than last year because it, it brings the, it kind of back to LAN. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Like, I mean, this year leading up to it, I mean, I lost to a fucking Halo player, man, in the 2K. Like, and then I lost to under 18 French pricks. Like, my year was <laughs> done by tell, losing tell to a shitty really Halo good. player, and then bloody Senka and his merry men. He can't even go to America. He can't even go to America. Yeah, he's he's playing in 2K to ruin people's chances. Yeah, it just does my head in, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I think but yeah, it's so much better this way. Like yeah. if you if you're good on land, and if you don't hit top thirty two that first event, you don't deserve to qualify. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, I think that's a fair point because I was going to say like it is all or nothing in the first event, really, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. make sure you get yourself over. But then at the same time, you know, if you don't qualify, then you can go over. And we've obviously heard about the amateur scene. There's going to be more. Well, there's going to be prize pools like and that. that sort of things. I, I really don't. I don't I'm, I'm sure really against it. Bryce is going to move into it in a bit, but at least it's like a good opportunity for a lot of players to do what yeah. they need to do in the first event. And if it doesn't work out, then you've at least got something else to play for for the rest of the year. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, you're talking about this, this this amateur league now, and they're kind of splitting up. And some people were kind of not happy about being in the amateur league. I was like, but if there's a structure there for you to move up, like, it works. Well, I don't but, see, I, like, but no one's going to move up, Bryce. Like, I've had this discussion with other people. Like, so you I can give you an example I have a player who went through the amateur system and moved up. Go on. Because you, you gave him the up. It's Fair. scraps. But that was literally because we had no one. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but next, year, but next year, really, you're going to have five players and a sub. 
Are you no, telling me that there's not going to be some shifting Scraps in there? Was, Scraps was playing against good teams. Yeah. That, like, I mean, that is true. In, the, in is this true. amateur league thing, like, it's just going to be the same teams playing the same teams. Like, say I'm in a top American. I ain't fucking scrimming those amateur teams. What am I going to waste my time playing them for? <laughs> So they ain't going to get any airtime playing anyone good. Maybe one of them might be good friends with someone and get brought into a few eights lobbies. But other than that, like, it's just going to kill it off in my eyes. It's just going to be the same people from the past three years that will just be, all right, you didn't make the league. Or say Goonjaw doesn't make the league. All right, you don't make, you don't make the league. And all right, just yeah. come, be off, come, come be our sub, come be our thing. And someone starts fucking up, you can jump in from. Or who else is another person that's always been at the top? Like, Theory, like, who, who's, like, great player. What, what he does, but who's really going to, like, if he doesn't make the league, who's really going to, like, want to play with him? You know what I mean? They're just going to pick someone else, like, that like, yeah. kind of over him or something like that. Like, Gwen Fear is probably better than him. It just uh, makes no sense. I mean, someone's made a fair point in the chat. Do you think this is the, the sort of the basis for franchising? I think it could I be. Say, I ain't saying anything. Just the horizon. Uh, you know, even from a theoretical standpoint, this is exactly how yeah. you would bleed into franchising. Yeah, um, <laughs> just, you know, you get rid of relegation, it's moving to a heavy league format, it's 5v5. I mean, it, it does look a lot like the OWL format. It's, it's not lie, yeah, I'm going to lie here. The, the OWL format has the contenders, which is then brought down from... Actually, never mind, it's all franchising, so you never know if it does go franchise and it might end up like that, but... It, it's, it's, it's at least in parallel with it. It's very close if it's not at least uh, an alluding. Now, there has been no... The only talk of franchising has actually been from third-party sources or where they've talked about the OWL and there's been talks around that region of who gets mm-hmm. what team and so on and mm-hmm. so forth, right? Nothing for Activision so far, but this does seem like at least it would it would be an easier transition for it. It was probably too soon to change this year. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all next year, not even a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't, but still. I, I, I like the idea of franchising, personally. Opens up so many Stability, different jobs. Ability, right? Yeah. Ability, jobs, funner to watch. Like, I never thought Overwatch would be doing what it's doing. I mean, not, I'm not saying it's like... I'd st- I don't know if people put Overwatch as a tier one eSport. It's getting there. It's getting it, there, I think. It, the production, everything, like, everyone that's gone over there, I've, from Pocket to Mr. X, they've always just said good things about it, like... Just, it seems really good. So if it could, it's a, go in that direction. a lot more polished. It's one of those yeah. polished esports I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's straight out of the out of the blocks as well, isn't it? It's not like a tactic to go through that development period of oh, okay, we've had our little shitty events, yeah. then they're starting to get a little bit better. It's sort of just like through millions of dollars that it's straight away, and it's already mm-hmm. hit that top tier, and it's just going to constantly keep growing and growing because I mean, not just because of that. Obviously, the game's pretty decent as well. But because of what they've invested into it, they're going to see a lot of that sort of come to fruition with their viewers and stuff. But I think uh, the way that that worked is the franchising, obviously the money gets invested back into the league that they pay for the spots, doesn't it? Like it was all sort of invested in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was one way to, to kind of monetize uh, an esports straight away. It was, it was a great idea. And it was while a lot of people are looking at it and looking at it to see whether or not that kind of pays out. And I think they had a great first year. You know, there are some teething issues and they're changing a few bits here and there. But it went fairly well. Let's let's move on now because there was another bit about the league that I wanted to talk about, um, and it is maybe a minor change for people outside the league, slightly better inside the league. Uh, base pay plus win bonus plus prize pool is essentially you're paying for if you get in the league. Uh, if you get in the league, obviously you get salary from your orgs anyway. Um, there is a, 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 a I believe there's a base prize if you get just getting in the league gets you at least some amount of money just the way the prize pool is split. Yeah, this year um, was like then, three thousand, uh, twelve thousand dollars for each team yeah. that qualified for both stages. So twenty-four thousand dollars. Yeah, both times. Yeah, so getting in the league, you already get money, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you do well in the league, you get more money. The prize mm-hmm. pool for the league is there, but you also now get this win bonus, meaning that it really pays off, literally, to go dumb hard against every team. Really, obviously. No, don't you dare, man. <laughs> don't you dare, because we, <laughs> we genuinely it, fucking mate. tried. We genuinely tried. I, I, I know you tried, I know you tried, but does it change anything in your mind about the way you would approach games? No, because I still went stupid hard. The team was just shit last year. Like, the game wasn't <laughs> great. I'm, I'm not putting stand on the game. I'll, I'll change it slightly. I'll change, really, I, will, I, I will change it slightly. I will change this question slightly. 
how big of a difference do you think it makes for the players in the league for having a win bonus? Yeah, no, it's obviously more incentive, but then again, like, it should be, if you're in a league, you're, you're competing at the top, you're still putting the hours, I was turning up two hours before each game at the league, turn up, get a free and walk, go back home, like, it was, I still, everyone was still putting that extra effort in, it's just like, I don't think, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, saying money I'm just saying, yeah, like, like this is a, it, it's a change at least, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's a good change. The incentive's always there. Like, all right, maybe if it was someone else that was in our, my team, my team's shoes that literally didn't give a flying fuck. Yeah. Yeah, then maybe it might be more of a sentence to them. But my team, don't use my team as an example because we actually did give a shit. <laughs> I've, I've never got... seen three people like always upset after events. Like it was literally so heartbreaking because we wanted to win so much and like just be better than what we was. We had one mm. decent event and we, we, it was at Anaheim, but Oh, God. It stresses me out. I think, I think I've set you off here. Don't bring <laughs> it in the past. What, what, I, what I think the, the biggest change is for that is it's, it, it makes every single match a little bit more important. Because there were some times where it's like middle of the table, people were like, oh, not really that interesting. But there's, there's money on the line every single game now. Every single best of five, you can't, you know, go and maybe ego or try to practice... You know your worst maps against people because and some teams did that. Some teams did that last year. You know, they yeah. thought they had an easier game. They put they, they didn't give as much attention to the vetoes as they thought they should. Mm-hmm. When it's yeah. literally coming out of your pocket now, if you don't win that game, you get less money. That's more important. And then there's I mean, the like there's there's a scenario where you would see like towards the end of the season where lower teams are trying to get themselves out of relegation, that sort of thing. They're going up teams who are like guaranteed playoffs. And they're like, obviously, yeah. these teams aren't as you know bothered because they're already guaranteed. And then you would have really, all the, really angry. Yeah, but like then all these results that happen because of like what like was it envy? Well, there was a certain couple of teams that yeah, lost game. Yeah, it was game. EG. Yeah, EG. Yeah. That <laughs> really, really, really did it. Mm-hmm. And then envy didn't qualify because we beat them. Like, but we didn't try in the league. I saw a Reddit post the other day, man. I swear. Oh no, I see you. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my well, god. Well, that is well, a bad, ta- bad place. While this is taking you away from the topic, I actually think this is a great topic to cover very quickly, right? Um, because I've seen the same thing, really, and I think it's hilarious. Uh, because people don't realize that being in that pro league, you're still better than 99% of the teams mm-hmm. out there. People yeah. don't realize that they're a tier. You can be the worst in the pro league, but you're still in the pro league. You're still probably better than 99% of the teams out there. There may be a few in the top 24 that can take you on. We see that at events. But it's not like there's this, oh, you'd be top 64 if you were in the league. That's just that's right. just not how it works. When you're playing against the elite level teams and the best teams in the world, you are probably going to be, you know, you what, are going to lose games. Somebody has off, to lose. Yeah, what set me off one time was when someone was saying E6 was better than us and we we literally smoked them at Anaheim and then I saw it in the league after we went 1-12 and 12 or whatever we did. I thought, oh, E6 should be in the league. I was like, we literally just smoked them. Like, are you good? Yeah, and that true. makes sense, right? That's true. Like, yeah. Uh, something there's I, different tiers of teams I've always said it yeah. something I just want to touch on just from something I've just seen on Reddit uh, was the decision to use the top 16 teams from Pro League instead of Champs yeah that's stupid no. <laughs> that's now, tell me what you really think now Adam Adam Abbasella made a fair point saying that Pro League is in our opinion the centrepiece of the programme with 17 weeks of competition showing the sample size but then some people would argue it's the biggest tournament of the year. Why wouldn't you base it off champs the latest tournament as well? I think it's two two sides to that the argument. Pro League Pro League is obviously where you see the most like the highest competition over a space of time, without a doubt. But champs is where the pressure's on. Yeah. Like, that first event in somewhat next year is gonna be I'm not gonna class it like champs, but it will be up there because if you get top four of that event, you're in the Pro League. Yeah. Like, here's the other thing about that and now this is a great opportunity to move on having a quick look through on the the blog post you need from last year to get your next uh pool thing two players two players have to stick i thought it was not, three what did they change that is it oh three? is it three is it three three from last year yeah three from last year that's why that's, 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 that's why i saw zinni um method tweet out saying something about it because yeah. apparently he he he's like might be leaving Optic, and we all know about that. It's probably the worst kept secret in esports. Yeah. Shout out to the Podburner, by the way. Whoever you are, honestly, banging business idea. All like Matty and that we speak about the other night. Get a green screen. Get a bloody suit. Like mask up. 
get a voice change on and start leaking shit live on Twitch. <laughs> oh if the cod butter is listening, you can come do it on this show. We will get you in Bro, and we will discuss it. I said that the other day, man. I was like, hold on a minute. I might do this myself and just start guessing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blow. That'd be hilarious. Oh, man. man. But, um, sorry, I was going to, like, a lot of people are saying that they get that chance to save Optic, which is what a lot of people would presume, but... It's I, worse. It's actually worse because they drop into the prize pool. Uh, mm-hmm. The prize pool pool, I suppose. We like, not the what, one one, the pro points pool. Mm-hmm. Like, you then have to play on pro points to get back in. So, I mean, admittedly, they probably have a decent amount of pro points. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to be too much of a trouble for them. But it does look like they won't have that automatic then because the rumour is they don't have three anymore. I mean, you look at so the... Would that, would, that, would that then drop down? Like, say, say Optic don't keep Cine, yeah, and they're going mm-hmm. there and announce roster. Yeah. So, would that then drop down if someone that was blowing? Because say, for example, me, Steve, and Billy stay together. We was in the Pro League, you know what I'm saying? Us three are still in there, like... But that would then drop we'll down to, like, the 13th place. Well, hold on, place. What was it? No, was it not top 12? It was, like, it was top 12. Yeah, it was top 12. But so say Optic was in the top 12. But they don't keep the third player, so they move into the pool. Presumably, play. next one down. Pool. Yeah, next one down. So thirteenth. Who's the thirteenth team? Oh, I know. Would they not just make it a seventh spot for the pro points? That uh, would make maybe. more sense. Nah, because then there's a little tournament, isn't it? Yeah, but just... that, hmm. yeah, but then how do you judge who was thirteenth when there was all sort of like after the top twelve? It was well, I suppose oh, you I'm could back. go back to. Well, so in my calculation, Splice are fucked because they're not a team anymore. Who who else is in a pro league after them? I, I, I tell you oh. what, the one that it impacts is um, 100 Thieves. Because what? Their roster now is what? Octane, Pharaoh, Kenny. So they probably need to pick up somebody from that previous TK roster to, to, to have a spot. Because they can't pick up two players from. I don't know. T- I mean, Kenny's got to have a crap ton of throw points. Yeah, well, you, but you like, it's imagine. just going off the, the top 12 thing, bro. It's like. Mm-hmm. If it's they wanted to go that, straight true. in, then. But, yeah, but, yeah. but someone actually brought this up in the chat, right? They're saying there's a lot of teams that don't have the same three anymore. Yeah. So by points, that 100 Thieves roster is probably all right. Who's it? Yeah. You there's would a lot of math so. going on right now. And again, that leads into roster mania, right? You're mm-hmm. looking at that going, you know pool play is an advantage. No, it is. It is an advantage being in pool play to get forward and you want to get as far as possible because you want to be in that winner's bracket. You don't want to go through open. You gotta figure it out. Yeah, so they'll probably be yeah, Marky said um, hundred thieves will be alright in pro points. Yeah, you would think so. So the majority of the teams can probably well Yeah, but they still have they'll be alright in pro points, but they still have to go through that little tournament, yeah. no? The relegation tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To get into pool yeah. play. To get into pool play. And then so I presume if they don't get into pool play, they just slot into a like a high slot on the open bracket, I would presume. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's, it's, I, I don't know how it's some being run. Yeah, it'll be something. I like think. That. I think. I think. I think. Right, so why is Mark with... typing in the chat when he could be on here discussing this with us? The stupid. I'm not going to say. This. He's got five players to find. Uh, cool. <laughs> He's got his list. He's checking it twice. He's finding oh, out who's not the next nice. Sport outside it goes. Yeah. So like. So there is a chance, Mark. If me, Steve, and Billy stick together, all these teams we could be in the pool play. Like slim chance, but very small. Like we would be nasty. He was a boat. I wonder where Steve was going because I remember speaking to him and he was saying he wanted to get some young players together and try it out. But that, that then that I, I, I tell you what, Margie says he can come in. Did I'm it? okay with Margie. I'm, I know I'll mess up your thing, but I'm okay with him coming in. Yeah. Okay. Right. We can explain how this works. Hold if on. I, I tell you what, Mark, just... just join the call. Don't don't join with Cam. Yeah, don't join with Cam. That shouldn't mess things up. No, it won't mess things up. It shouldn't. I hope if you're watching Marky. I hope. Trust, trust Marky beat an audience on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hit, man. yeah Par- Paradox has got it right, though. That's what I was saying. Oh, it's messed up. It's messed everything up. Yeah. Hey, Marky B anyway, though. Hello, Marky. What's up, guys? Fix it, ton. Fixing it. Me. Um, oh, what's up? Marky, if I've, if I've got this right, and what you're about to explain is any top 12 team that doesn't retain the majority of its roster. Uh, will be put in with pro points <laughs> in pro play. <laughs> I'm having to fix it. He's messed it up. No, basically, right, because 100 Thieves have the most pro points, right? So yeah. if, they, if, if they if they don't retain their, like, three players, that means uh, that means the, the highest team in pro points has to come into the top 12 anyway. So, yeah. like, they're guaranteed regardless. Like, they don't have to whatever. They have, yeah, they have a load of pro points, right? Like a ton. Well, yeah, because yeah, they won three events, one... Uh, which is obviously where you get get the most pro points. Yeah, and, and it's a are, significant bump as well. Like it's not yeah. a small amount. Yeah, yeah so that, massive. That, that kind of makes sense, uh, Marky. While we've got you here, and I do appreciate you coming on, even if it's it's 
pressing ton out. Um, how, how are you finding, like, because obviously now you, you do a lot with the Splice COD team, right? Um, and you're still in that position? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, how are you finding it now you've got five, five players, not four? Uh, obviously, it's uh, a bit different. You know what I mean, like, a lot of teams are changing. A lot of uh, things are going on behind the scenes. So it's uh, it's very interesting. But uh, I can't really say much more. No, but, that's why I don't uh, have to leak your roster yeah. and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's, it's, yes. It's but, then, but, then, but then again, Margie, you know, you've, you've played COD for like as long as I can remember. I remember first encounter in MW2, I want to say, or 3. Um, you, wow. what, what do you, how do you feel about the 5v5? Um, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's, it's really one of those things. We don't really know how it's going to play out. Like, it's a gamble really it could be good could be could be terrible we'll just we have to wait and see <laughs> I'm just hoping I'm just hoping for the best really you're just going to back not, not going to not going to join your rosters then Mark are you, are you uh, coming back next year no no I'm not coming back next year no, no. you're good you're good you're good in the co- coach role yep oh, okay that's interesting I was wondering whether or not this was... what are you saying Tony plays the bills pal plays the bill plays the bills that's what you have to um, think about, though. Uh, what do we think about the cha- while we're doing this? What do we think about the change to the CWL finals? No two stages, just one stage, and there will be a big tournament to kick it all off at the end. I like I it. It's reminding me of the Super Bowl, dude. I'm telling you, this is this is all looking like the NFL. I fuck with it, man. I hate it. I hate last year going there for two weeks, going home for two weeks, going back there for two weeks. Oh my god. I like it because I think that Pro League towards the end of Stage 2 got a little bit stagnant. Um, I think it was just like watching the same games over and over again. It was a bit, It started to get a little bit dull. So I don't mind the fact that it's just going to be one this time. So it's just one big thing rather than game after game after game after game after game after game. And it just it got a little bit repetitive and a little bit dull towards the end for me. Yeah. I also like the idea of the introduction of uh, intru- introduction? introduction of um, giving teams money for winning certain games. That obviously you've already covered this stuff, but like that's uh, I think that's obviously massive for uh, teams like uh, teams like Epsilon. Uh, Mark, uh, good good games for relegation, bro. Into retirement, bro. Let's move on to something that does, doesn't doesn't cover that much because this sore subject let's talk about the am circuit completely revamped am circuit this year own separate circuit uh it looks like they're trying to get more of a division between pros and amateurs yeah i not against that i think it's a it's a good idea i'm really sick of seeing pro teams smash yes. am 3-0 yes. they, i mean that, that's, that's, that's the worst games in the world that's yeah. probably like, the biggest I, reason why they've done it is because saturdays sucked they were rubbish as far as the broadcast concerned because it was just teams just getting railed every yeah. single and it was rubbish to watch. Not nobody. Except, was, they, except for when the AM team got put into Epsilon's pool. I think there was pros and cons. There was pros and cons to it. Like there was amateur teams. Obviously, I'd say out of like, I'd say out of like maybe a five percent of all the games from amateur teams coming into pool play, the amateur teams would get a result. But there was cases where amateur teams did get results against pro teams, which obviously wouldn't be happening, which does suck. But uh, if there's a lot of money in this amateur circuit, then I think it's there's pros and cons to it. Being a obviously competitor, you'd rather sit there and and and, and play against, be able to have a chance of playing against the best teams. But if there's also a chance to earn money while well, being an amateur player, which is something that a lot of people have concerns about, then uh, that's a benefit as well. Mark, I don't know because we've already covered it. I don't know how much you can say right now, and I completely accept if you can, we are, kind of have to move on. Like, the region lock coming off, has that changed Spice's plans, or has that just kind of thrown a big spanner in your entire work up? Um, I mean, obviously... Uh- it- <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> we could <laughs> no. Obviously, oh, like we could. Oh no! Like, it, oh, gives more, more, oh. it gives us more options of people we can <laughs> uh, look at and players and stuff like that. So you there it is. It's confirmed. Know. It's confirmed. There it is. March is confirmed on stream. I'm telling Marty. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, you already knew about the Jesus. like. Everyone seemed to know about the international lot coming off because Reese Price leaked it. Um, yeah, Reese Price leaked it. <laughs> tell it to Reese. Uh, so everyone seemed to know so I think it isn't going to necessarily come as a surprise to everybody that everyone's going to be like, oh my god we can look for American well, I, players now I mean yeah Marty tweeted out like three weeks ago or something like that he was like oh we're open to players from all regions so like this is I think like yeah very badly kept secret like mm-hmm. yeah 
yeah, just one of those things. I think Five Five was. It was actually kind of annoying they've, they've kept it. I don't know why they had to make a big deal of it. I don't know, to be honest. No, it was only made... <sighs> well, in fact, it is kind of a big deal. Like, yeah, it's a massive deal. Yeah, 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 I know, but I would I rather... I just... people that were saying, oh, it's going to be 4v4, it's all a fucking deploy. Like, do you know how stupid that looks? Yeah, no, it was just you know obvious how... it was 5v5. I feel like that's why they should have just made it an announcement say it was 5v5 or at least told, told the pro teams or whatever. I don't know. I like, I like how they done it. It was annoying waiting, but... I just hate the people that say, no, oh, it's going to stay 4v4. Like, man, get with the times, bro. Like, do you know how bad that looks? If it was going to stay 4v4, they would have announced it ages ago. Like, for new organizations wanting to come into Call of Duty, could you imagine, like, for this next season, they will say, say, for example, I had four people. and was like, oh, yeah, we want to join your organization. They're very interested. It was like, sweet. I was like, but there's one thing. It might be going 5v5. We wait to the 19th and it's like, oh, no, it's 4v4. So it just makes it look unprofessional. I think I, I think, that but you're, you you remember the first event uh, isn't until December. Yeah, but still, I, I think every- it was, I think it was a big big choice for them. I think they will be kind of whether or not they should do it. I guess they were still locking things down before they announced it, which is why they didn't announce it all at once. Mm. Um, but yeah, I can see what they do. You got to remember, that, like there's there's massive cogs that have got to be moved for things to happen, and I'm sure they didn't take it lightly at any point. Um, one thing the, the like we'll cover here because this is the the last one that we haven't covered so far. Uh, the event schedule for next year. Mm, yeah, so, the, the, twelve the, weeks of pro league. Give me there'll a be, bloody fucking Gfinity event, please. <laughs> there will be six spectator events, include and and that's an interesting way they've said that six spectator events, including CWL finals and CWL championship. So there are four events outside of it. One of which is Vegas, which means there are three events we don't know about. That's less events than last year, I think. Yeah, that is. Um, but also, they say spectator events, which kind of leads me to believe that we may see Black some invitations out. or something. We're going to see blackout mm. events. That's what we're going to see. That's true. That's blackout events point. will be good. That's a fair And point. that's why the five or how many events we've got, I don't care about because I've got blackout all year. Hold tight, <laughs> Lord Fondy. <laughs> It's just that, like like I've yeah, really yeah, yeah. Ne- I've never been one for playing pubs like full stop, uh, but that just it just changes the game completely, doesn't it? Like when uh, when it went off the other day, them. you know what? Yeah, I don't even need to do the next game, but they just just give it to Treyarch every year, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'd stress them right out if we had that pop out new card every year, mate. If I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah, you got a three year cycle. It's now a one year cycle, and you have to make it every do you think, single. Do you think year. pro teams will play blackout? Like, if there's blackout tournaments, do you think pro teams will be in on it? I'll be straight on on it. If even if it's on PC, I'll play it. I, I love we'll it. I generally PC, think yeah. it's my. I generally, I generally believe like what they, I've sort of saw it on PC, and it looks amazing. Even on console, like with a pro, I was playing it without a pro, and my god, it was awful. But when I got a pro, blackout was by far the most. The best BR I've played in a long time since like Armor 2, when yeah. BRs literally came about, and that's when I last enjoyed it. Yeah. Fortnite is gash. Just to quickly address one of the questions in the chat, a lot of people asking if you think there'll be an EU event. I would be shocked if there'll there be isn't. One. There will be one, sure. Yeah, the, it, and it will be off. Birmingham again. No man, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. No, give it to Gfinity, man. Uh, no, I give it, it to no, EGL. No. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Sorry, I forgot about EGL, yeah, EGL would be great. I'm sitting here like, God (laughs) sick. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Listen, I'm a big Gfinity fan. I I love the EGL events as well, but I've always been a big Gfinity fan. You wouldn't want a Gfinity because it's around the corner. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hear me out on this one, right? CWL Glasgow. Anyway, um, so... (laughs) Moving on to... How are the Americans going to cope with Glasgow, man? Like what do you mean? Understand. Glasgow's a lovely mean? place, man. I actually, well, yeah, I, I will well, actually vouch. Place, like you have got thick accents. Yeah, you could have a Newcastle. I want to hear. I want to hear this vouch. I was going to vouch for Glasgow as being a nice place. Yeah, and Newcastle's lovely as well, mate. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, let's just say well, let's let's have some more events up I, north. How are you going to come in here and just lie? No one wants to go down to down south, man. It's boring down there, man. Get us up north. Hold on a minute. You're <laughs> nice. I mean, one pound drink for that. One pound drink. Seven lots. One pound drinks. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly why we should go there for the cheap drinks. That that's that's a, that's exactly why. Uh, well. I'd actually love to see another event in Seattle. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that Seattle event. Actually, I, I thought Seattle was a good hosting city. I hate Se- hated Seattle. Did you? Oh, I loved Seattle. I thought it was great, but I think um, one of them events is guaranteed to be Anaheim. I would say. Yeah. Fuck, uh, yeah. Fuck so so basically, the way I've worked it out is. Very 
Vegas, Anaheim, Birmingham, and then there's one we don't know, which could be Columbus again. It uh, wouldn't surprise me if it's Columbus. I am, I am actually really hoping that they sort of have made a mistake, and it is six events plus the two. I know it's just the word no, and everyone... I, everyone I've seen is including. Mm-hmm. But spectator events means there could be other ones. So there could be Amped. A-Land 2, that's coming. That'll be Blackout. A-Land 2, yeah. Brilliant. I'll make, I'll make my second land and be blackout get everyone in Just got one of and I'm good we'll be a good I think there'll be I think I'll, yeah in <laughs> I think I think the outside the CWO there will be blackout stuff to play in hmm. and I think it'll be interesting to see the schedule of those events compared to the CWO because blackout I think blackout went so well that everybody and their dog is going to be trying to throw an event for it it wouldn't surprise me if they do them alongside the actual events as well though like if they've got like a, a, a little well it's not going to be a little because it's 100 players but you know like a, a, a little tournament going on during the actual CWL events it wouldn't surprise mm-hmm. me if they throw something on like that as well yeah just yeah, get loads of influencers man get all the boys in like what they're doing mm-hmm. every event just pull it oh my god oh, it's going to be a good year man in Vondi <laughs> we trust in Vondi we trust <laughs> now we can uh, get Maven out of a job and we're good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I think Maven's now part of the framework, mate. I don't think Maven's going anywhere. Maven is he's, he's, he's a lovable guy. He's lovable. He's he's a friendly CWL face. He's bald. He's I'm bald. aware he's got no hair, mate. It doesn't make him a less lovable person. I don't like him. He's not <laughs> right. Price to fittings aside, uh, I think that pretty much sums up everything for this year. Uh, I probably don't want to talk too much about Blackout because I want to talk about next week as well as the roster changes. So, anyone else got anything else to add before we uh, roll this up? Uh, we've got questions in the chat if you want to go through some of them. Uh, there are a few questions in the chat, actually. We can quickly, quickly cover these. Uh, people asking what's going on with Judd. Can't talk about that. Uh, EU can. event, we've covered that. <laughs> we'll move on quickly. Um <laughs> We're probably going to be scrimming without the game modes and maps released. That's they'll be released point. before. I imagine... They'll be released Yeah, yeah they'll be released before the game comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think there should be more EU events? I think we're all Europeans, so we're obviously going to say yes. Like, that's that's an obvious one. I do miss there being at least three European events a year. The only way for it to realistically happen in the current structure is for that amateur circuit events. Um, I think, maybe, they like said 25Ks. Were, that's that's yeah, about it. They said they were restructuring on the national circuit side of things, yeah. so that's me out of the job oh, on a Friday hey, night. Still on it. Oh, I didn't like that. That was boring. Well, the national circuit stuff? Yeah, it was so boring to plan. I, 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 I didn't mind it because I was sitting here on a Friday night just casting all night, which was fun. But at the same time, I think that could definitely... It wouldn't surprise me if they maybe throw on little events here and there. I, w- I would like to see that. We should, if for the UK one... No. Right, sorry, Tan. Actually, I'm not going to say it on here. I, I got no, no, you're bloody not. All right. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 the other questions, let's see. Uh, would pros struggle to adapt from slowness of World War II to the quickness of 5v5, best out of four? They have to adapt every single year to a new game anyway, and it's just another da- adaptation for me. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it depends, right? Like, it's there's, there's a lot of things going on next year. I'm sure they're going to keep kind of qualifying how it all comes out. Um, for app, here's the thing like amateurs don't like to think of themselves as amateurs right so they're always going to be like oh you know it's I don't know about this am league stuff well you know it's some, it's a way for you maybe to get noticed I'm not saying that everybody's going to make it you know even if one player comes through that system and, and kind of gets noticed but the biggest question I noticed in the chat and I think we've already kind of covered this but I think it's really worth covering how much Vegas means oh, for I the think year massive. Like, you need to go. book your flights now book your <laughs> flight right now if you want to go to that event because if you I uh, bruh that, I'm I mean, thinking of booking as soon as I get a bit of like, I can't say it again, but yeah, so it's getting booked soon. Soon as someone you know does something. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's booking someone that does something. Um, what, like, because it also means like it's basically a route to champs as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, and also like, if you don't qualify for the league that uh, at that event, right? Obviously, there are like going to be players that are going to be coming in, but you're going to have no like you you can't create a team and then qualify again with that team. There's no like it's going to be you trying to impress under a, a different team. There's not going to be any like wave. So that event is just yeah, well, it's everything, right? 
Because there's only one stage. There's no two stages, no yeah. relegation, there's nothing. It's one stage. 12 weeks and a big part of the year. Uh, and, you know, Paul plan everything going forward. It is get in the league and you need to get in it at Vegas. And you're going to affect you don't get well. it automatically at Vegas, then you've got to go through the next, uh, the, the last chance qualifier, or what, what, I don't know what they're calling it, uh, the qualifier. I'm sure it has an official name. Everything has an official name. And you're going to think with it being one stage that, like, it's also going to set people up for, like, the teams that qualify for, like, sort of what's for next year as well and stuff yeah. like that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like no, those, those top teams are going to remain top teams, you know what I mean? Because they're going to be in the... Um, like the top sixteen, they're going to be uh, people. Teams are going to be get picked up from just being in the pro league the previous year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah 100%. Same thing. You would think they're going to do that again. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's very interesting. Just how much Vegas really means to people. Like it, it's pretty much everything. Best event I've been to in America, by the way. Oh, I don't Vegas. know if you guys are Vegas on IW. Unbelievable. I, uh, I haven't been to one yet, but I'm hoping. Oh, I'm God, I've only ever been to Vegas good. on the stag, dude. It was very good crack. And all I know is I spent a lot of money. You made a lot uh, of money, what you told me. I did also make a lot of money. <laughs> I still spent a lot, though, time. I didn't cover yeah. it. I made a massive bet at the end of the weekend, but I didn't use, cover everything back. You should use some of that internet to get that money to get better bloody internet. Your camera hasn't moved for about My, five minutes. <laughs> that's, you know, just me posing very, very... I'm trying to do a Drax thing, where hopefully I go invisible. Um... But, but yeah, basically, I've got engineers coming in to fix my internet, so it'll be all right next time. It'll be fine. Good. It'll be fine. Uh, all right, I think that means that, that's everything. Uh, thank you, Rudy, for coming on. Thank you for Marky for joining us halfway through. Hopefully, next time you'll be here all the time. Um, <laughs> I know you're a very busy man. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for kind of watching and coming into this one. We'll we'll be trying to change the format if we think we can find something better that works and, and new segments and all kinds of stuff. Um, thank you for Tan because Tan helped put all this together. Tons of everything. Even though, you know, Tons yeah, everything. Tons a terrible person, but you know, he's he's here and he's about. He uh, if you like something, like something, make sure you let us know. Uh, again, big shout out to Reedy. Uh, we'll find out where he goes next year, and and Marky B, who's now got a composer roster five guns to try and compete next year. I'm sure you both can be very very busy. Uh, have you two got any final shout outs? Yeah, Marky's Marky. gonna shock the world. Marky's gonna shock the world. <laughs> yep. Yeah, show it to me. I'm gonna shock the world. Mark, yeah, he's yeah. going to shock the world. Uh, Reedy, anything else? Uh, no, I ain't got no shout outs to anyone. I would shout out my org, but I ain't in one. Oh. Hey, Tan! <laughs> no, we'll leave it there. Guys, just uh, make sure you follow the channel. We'll be back every single Wednesday. Oh, shout out to Tani and EGL. Yeah, th- thank, you, John. Like thank you, John. Thank you, John. But guys, yeah, make sure you follow the channel. We'll be back every single Wednesday. Um, me and Bryce will remain every single time, but we'll we'll get everybody in as uh, that we can. Yeah. Um, questions still all through the Twitch chat when, when you're here as well. But we'll uh, I said Bryce um, said that we'll be doing different topics and stuff like that. Uh, but we I said we'll be back next Wednesday. Fucking kebabs going cold. Hurry up! Didn't hear a word of that. No, I know what I said that. That was the worst thing ever. He's good to go in the chat. All right, I'm gonna say goodbye before he says something terrific. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.